Hello friends! Today I'm doing something a little new. I am starting a new series of videos where I do modern retellings of mythology. I put up a poll recently asking where people wanted me to start, and the only response I got, which is not surprising because my channel is still small, was Native American. So I dug out one of my old books uh, the Handbook of Native American Mythology, which I've more kind of pieced through rather than read cover to cover. And I found one that I felt was worth sharing today. So I'm going to give you my own modern retelling of Alarana and the Caribou. Alarana and the Caribou is a Inupiat myth. So this is to the far north of North America. So as I said, I first found this myth in the Handbook of Native American Mythology. Not sponsored, just a book I bought secondhand that I've been enjoying. This is a modern retelling. I am going to retell this in my own words, and there are going to be some fluctuations. Just as all mythology was told word of mouth, there were some natural variations. So I hope you will forgive me for taking some liberties with this, but the spirit of the myth is the same. I've just merely modernized some language and am telling it extemporaneously with just bullet notes rather than reading from a script. That being said, here is Alarana and the Caribou. Long ago, in the lands far north, Winter was harsh. Famine came early. And the tribe to which Alarana and her brother belonged suffered greatly due to famine. As the famine grew longer and time passed, more and more of the tribe passed on, entering the land of spirits, until only Alarana and her younger brother survived. Seeing that there was nothing left to salvage, they gathered themselves together and headed out to seek other tribes, other peoples that they could unite with. Not too far into their journey, they encountered a pack of wolves. Hungry wolves that fell upon them and devoured the flesh from their bones. But these were no normal wolves. These were wolves who were sometimes people. People who were sometimes wolves. Among these people, there was an old woman who took pity on these children. So she petitioned the rest of her people that she might take their bones. A petition that was granted. So the old woman took these bones, arranged them carefully upon the ground, laid skins of caribou upon them, and then spread the guts of walrus on top of the skins. She was no ordinary woman, for she had magic in her song. Having made her preparations, she began to sing. And as she sang, she wove magic into the skins and the guts and the bones. As her song continued, the bones began to move, to join, to reunite. In the morning, Alarana and her brother found themselves alone, clad in the skins of caribou, still needing to find shelter and others to unite with. They headed inland, marveling at the speed of their travel, coming upon a herd of caribou. They were shocked, for caribou run when they see men, for they fear their bows and they fear their cook fires. Strangely, 
this herd of caribou welcomed Alarana and her brother as their own. At which point, Alarana realized they had become caribou themselves. Spending time with this herd, they learned how to survive in the harsh wilds, what plants could be eaten, where to find water. And they marveled again, for when they ate moss, it tasted like the richest meats, the finest whale skin. However, as they lived among the caribou, Alarana grew lonely. Spending time amongst the animals was wonderful, but she missed human companionship. So she and her brother found a hunting camp and lingered around the edges, listening to the hunters. The hunters were lamenting their horrible luck, for none of their traps seemed to catch the caribou. Hearing this, Alarana realized it was her fault, for she and her brother remembered how the traps of men worked, and so cautioned the herd to avoid them at all cost, desiring the company of the mortal men, and feeling a little responsible for their failed hunts. She removed her caribou skin and entered the camp. There, she spoke to the hunters and heard their complaints, raised her arms to the heavens and petitioned the spirits that this tribe may once again find success in their hunting. But a condition was laid upon them, for there was one caribou in particular that must be promised to Alarana and her brother. As sometimes happens amongst the race of man, one hunter was less than enthused. For see, he was greedy, and he chose to ignore this condition, taking the prized caribou for himself. As the condition had been broken, Alarana and her brother took back up their skins of caribou, left the hunters behind, and to this day live amongst the caribou, protecting them from this tribe of hunters. It is said that even now, their traps are perpetually empty. Thus ends the story of Alarana and the caribou clothing. Also sometimes called Alarana and the caribou, or many other variations, as myths tend to have. I hope you enjoyed this. I know that I enjoyed doing something a little more extemporaneous, a little more storytelling, rather than just tarot or reviews of things. If you liked this, let me know in the comments. If you have other myths you'd like me to do a modern retelling of, let me know. And as always, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.